foods, headaches, and uh, a few other things here. But So those are the main body types. So this makes people watching a lot more fun, right? So one after the other, you're going to come up in front of the cam camera and we're all going to assess you. Does that sound fun? <laughs> yeah. no, I wouldn't do that. But this does make Christmas shopping and airport travel and everything a lot more fun. You got your little cheat sheet. Yeah, okay, that's a dream. And then you could start to really be sly, you know. Maybe you'll catch the look at their fingernails and you'll see the ridges uh, from the thyroid. Maybe, you know, you'll notice the hair uh, in a relative used to be curly and now it doesn't curl anymore. And you could really start to help, in, in a way, self-diagnose, which can be dangerous, but I figure it's a lot better than getting on the internet. Who here is self-diagnosed on the internet? You go from maybe having a little bump on your arm to having full-blown stage four cancer and you got 60 days to live, right? That's what the internet does to you, so you gotta be careful. You gotta know who to trust. Okay, so what questions before I move on about the body types? They sort of look similar, I guess, except you know, we're at the end stage here. Sort of, but remember, remember, it's, uh, they are very pronounced differences. And somebody's gonna ask, what if I'm all four of these? Or I have all these symptoms, right? Well, you usually will have a primary, secondary, and tertiary. So who here doesn't have adrenal stress right now? Nobody. We all do. But some might just have a little bit, and some have a lot, like this gal here who had actually almost adrenal failure. So, and we're all in different parts of that. So here's how the, the goofy part about this is. If your adrenals are real stressed out, they kick out chemicals of stress that we talked about that make your, your muscles strong, and they shunt blood away from your gut and immune system. So people with a lot of adrenal stress will start to have thyroid problems because those adrenal hormones will inhibit the thyroid. Okay, everybody know your thyroid's right here, okay? Anybody think they might have a slow thyroid or diagnosed with a hypothyroid? Yeah, so sometimes it is. Your thyroid has a disease, like an autoimmune disease, okay? Like your body attacked its own tissues. What causes that? A lot of times it's not eating the right foods and stress. Okay. Okay. Please, Eric, give a phone call nine one. Thank you. The second thing is, the thyroid hormones activate where? One of these four places. What do you guys think? The liver. Eighty percent of your thyroid hormones will travel to the liver for activation. So hypothyroidism could be a liver problem too, right? Just by definition, how anatomy and physiology works. What organ or gland turns on the thyroid? The pituitary. Yeah. This is where your exercise comes in. Exercise will stimulate the pituitary. So right off the bat, some of you are going, hey, I have these thyroid symptoms and this thyroid body. I'm gonna go exercise, right? You're gonna go to the gym and get motivated, New Year's and all that. Here's the problem. What can exercise stress out? Your adrenal system, right? If you're already fighting and flighting and you go stress your body lifting weights, so then you're stuck in a problem, right? So I drink red wine before bed, stresses out my liver. I feel bad about it, so I go to the gym the next morning, I stress out my adrenals, and those things shut off my thyroid, so I gain weight. Does that make sense? And then you can't wake up the next day, so you drink caffeine, you stress your adrenals more, and you get stuck in this. And everybody says, but I love my exercise, I lift weights, I, I get that runner's high, I love it. I say, yeah, but you're fighting or flighting, it feels good because adrenaline makes you hyper alert. It's good stuff, right? That's why a lot of people like caffeine, it kind of makes you feel, you know, alive. The problem is we're, we're kind of robbing one organ to give to another and, and gland and, and pretty soon it all catches up to us and our body distorts and we get symptoms. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are some of the popular weight loss theories right now? What are some good diets, right? Adkins was about 10 years ago. That's still kind of lingering a little bit. South Beach. What else? What's that? Okay. Anything else? There's a lot of them. Nobody wants to volunteer. Okay, who here has done the A to Z diet? A to Z, anybody? There's probably a copy in the back somewhere. Every health food store has it. It's the Adkins to the zone and everything in the middle. The A to Z diet. You guys have done that. Come on. Tough crowd. All right. There's three things you could do to lose weight before the holiday. We still got two weeks, right? We got two weeks or right around there? 14 days, roughly? We're going to improve sleeping. So how do you improve sleep? Well, what gland is responsible for sleep? We talked about it right off the bat, right? The adrenal system, okay? So some things you can do to start taking adrenal stress off your body. Stop hammering yourself at the, the gym. So no intense exercise. Nice, low intensity aerobic exercise. 30 to 60 minutes of walking every day, okay? Fight the urge to jog. If a little's good, more must be better, right? That's not how it works. 
The adrenal system is tired. You guys are dealing with too much stress. What about uh, lowering the glycemic index of your food? Okay, so things that are refined, switch to whole. Right? Don't drink juice. Try to stay away from the wine. Eat whole foods, basic foods, right? Vegetables, fruits, nuts, beans, and high quality proteins, but not too much animal protein. Too much animal protein is one of the leading causes of tumor formation. And uh, it's toxic on the liver. So, little bit's good, too much, not good. What else? Um, eat a little celery before bed, that'll help you sleep for those of you who get the restless legs. Right, who gets the restless legs at night or the twitchiness? And yeah, it's usually a mineral deficiency. Why would somebody have a mineral deficiency? Because in fight or flight, what does your body need to have good muscle contraction? Sugar and minerals. So where does it get those minerals from? Your muscles. So your muscles get jumpy or and restless. How does celery come in? Good potassium in there. It's just a nice little trick. It's a mineral. Yeah, it's a good place to start with whole food, right? Dark green leafy vegetables, though. There, there's where you get your minerals. Little avocado, little salmon. Those are good sources of minerals. Magnesium, potassium. So, the other thing is with a, a, a long-term adrenal problem, when you're you're stealing blood away and minerals away from your bones and your muscles, where you know what happens when minerals leave your bones? Osteopenia, osteoporosis. It's another thing. It's not a it's not a boniva deficiency, right? Or uh, whatever they give you gals nowadays or calcium. guys. Calcium. Yeah, well think about it. If your body's robbing calcium from your bones, it's because you're stressed out. So loading your blood up with more calcium doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stop that process. It might help band-aid it, but you know. So our Western medicine is more about sick care. It's about <laughs> fixing symptoms. I'm all about fixing symptoms, but if you fix symptoms the wrong way, the root problems will get worse and worse and worse. And what does the end stage look like for those root problems? Diabetes, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, cancer, heart disease. Okay, these things, you don't just wake up one day and have cancer, heart disease, dementia, you know, it's a degenerative process. So the demographic of this room age-wise, you guys are the ones that are manifesting your diseases now. I don't mean to be a downer on you, but it's not, remember, one day, you, you, you're, you're not healthy one day and sick the next. It's a process, okay? So what I would tell you is now you have a choice, you know, those of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s, to some degree, as you start getting into your 70s and 80s, it gets a lot harder. But, you know, um, the earlier you prevent things, the better. So. To bring this all back together, the same way I get people to reverse, you know, possibly heart disease, not that we're curing it or treating it, we're getting them healthy so their body will reverse heart disease and cancer and diabetes, is the same way we get a body to lose weight, right? We remove adrenal stress, get the thyroid working better, detox the liver, okay? Get the gut working, okay? Because when all that blood's going to your muscles for fight or flight so you can run from the bear, where's it getting that blood from? Your gut, right? So what does your gut need to digest food? It needs that blood. What does your immune system need? Because when you're, when you're fighting and flighting, when you're running from danger, do you need to worry about fighting a little cold or flu when you're about to die? No. Do you need to worry about how well you digested that you know, steak yay? No, your body could care less. It needs to keep you alive, and then it will worry about that. But remember, guys, we're very overstimulated and stressed out. Okay? So what else? Um, we talked about those things. What, what kind of questions do we have? And never ask a question about yourself if you don't want to, but definitely the person sitting next to you, ask about them, or you know, that lady in the back, she's a good one to ask about. Yes? Can you clarify what you said about the calcium? That if, if it's out of your bones, and then if you take it in your blood, so what would you do to replenish into your body? Eat foods with calcium and stop being stressed out, right? <laughs> Whole foods is the best way to get absorbable calcium. What's the best source of calcium? Broccoli. Eat some raw broccoli. Okay? Supplementing's okay, but don't do that instead of eating the foods with high calcium. But remember, just because you put it in your body doesn't mean it's going where you want. Okay? And that's the danger. Supplements are great, but there's an appropriateness to them. That's why at a place like this, I come and speak. You got very knowledgeable staff here. This is a good store. They have 50 options of the same thing in some ways. Why? Because people are different. They have different needs. There's not just one fits all. Okay? So, 